and thank you very much for inviting me to speak today. Um, Brenda actually asked me to, to look at outlining five things to consider when taking on an asset. Now, as on any of you that have got into this process already, you realise that's actually quite a, a difficult thing to do because it's so many things that you need to think about. So I decided that I would be better to start looking at the early stage process, the things that you can look at for yourselves, start to identify what you need professional advisors to help you with. Um, the next few light slides focus on this sort of thing. So the first thing to get in place is your aims and objectives. I'm taking this from the point of view that there's maybe already a group of you together looking at an asset and you're thinking together about what it is you might want to do. You've got to determine what it is you want to do and why you want to do it. And it needs to be articulated clearly what will be the outcomes for your community. If your community is going to benefit from this, then you're a good way down the road to moving through the process. Very important to be clear at this stage, um, but be careful about it because you've also got to be able to be adaptable as you gather information. There may be things that you need to, to change as you go through the process, but continue to be clear about your core purpose. So once you've outlined your aims and objectives, you need to check that you have support from your community and all other target stakeholders. So that will include the council, um, your users who may not necessarily be the community. So have all this in your heads and know what it is that you're trying to take forward to ask people. So the second stage is do you have support? You need to ask yourself and the community several things. Is there a need? And how do you know? And does the asset provide the answers? At this stage, you don't need to do an in-depth consultation. It's much more about going out and asking people what you think. You can hold a public meeting at this stage. That gives people the knowledge and the information that this is something you're planning. But you need to get to know whether they agree or not. Can you be financially viable? Now, ask other people about the ideas you have to generate income. Find out if they're prepared to pay, because you are going to need to generate finance to be able to keep this asset going. Don't forget to ask the people who may not agree with what you're doing. Now, it's quite easy to be aware that there may be some people in your community that won't be too supportive, but it's quite important to take the time to go and speak to them too at an early stage and just see where they're coming from, see what their problems are and see if you can overcome them as you develop. Will your group project be sustainable? At an early stage, write down a list of the skills that you're going to need. And as you go through the process, you can gather names of people who can deliver these skills for you, who have the skills, talk to them, encourage them to become involved. So number three is, do you have the right asset? You've gathered all your information. You know what you want to do. You know that you have support. So you do have to find out if the asset is the right asset for what you want to do. So you need to do an options appraisal and linked to your aims and objectives. There's quite a few things to think about. You need to go through this process, identify what you have available as information that already exists, and also find out what you need to get professionals in to help you find out. Accessibility is really important. If you're going to be running a visitor centre and it's away at the back of an estate, then that's not really going to work. So you need to make sure it's visible, it's easy to get to, and it also includes everybody. I'll give you an example. I had, was working with a group out in the Western Isles who are very emotionally connected to their school. And the school was being closed to move the pupils into a much bigger school. 
they had identified a lot of need in their community to, to consolidate all of the health services. So things like the doctor, the dentist, um, alternative therapies, lots of things that they could bring into this one building. And the building actually fitted this. There was different entrance ways, and all they had to do, to their mind, was to move a few walls and create different access. It was in a beautiful area, it looked right over the sea, and it was in a perfect position within the, the community. Of course, these people had been going to this school for years and it had been fine for the school. But because the council were aware that they were moving to new premises, it hadn't had a huge amount of maintenance done on it. And so they decided to get a bit of a survey done. They had had a survey from the council and the council had said they were going to demolish it. The community were also, don't need to demolish it, it's fine. So they got a local surveyor to come in and have a good look at it. And he recommended that they spend the money on having a structural survey done. They had a structural survey, and sadly, what came back was that it was going to be a million pounds to get the building back to a usable standard. So they decided to talk to the council about the potential for taking on the site after it had been demolished. They all had gone through the process and, and dealt with the emotion of having to lose their school. But actually, they were prevented with the perfect opportunity to have something custom built for the need that they'd identified. So there are some things that just come up when you're going through this process that you can't fight. <laughs> so number four, is it the right asset? There are other things to consider. Even if the building is suitable and you can use it, you need to make sure you're allowed to. Does it fit with planning policies and is it in the local plan? And is the stuff around you suitable and complementary to what you want to do? Site ownership. Now this may seem obvious. But you should find out who owns the site. We had one situation where a community had gone quite a long way down the road with the council because the council had been managing the asset for a long, long time. But it transpired when these were dug out and, and all the information was pulled together that the council didn't own the site, it was still owned by the original Athelby state. So, you know, these things can happen. Are there any te tenants in the site? That can influence what it is you're doing depending on their um, legal agreement. And will you get the tenure you want? What tenure do you want? Do you want a long lease or do you want uh, outright ownership? Be very clear about that as well. Burdens and covenants, I'm sure many of those in the council will agree that um, quite a lot of the properties have got burdens attached to them. And it may be an example that you're looking at setting up a big tourist centre, something that's going to be really beneficial, providing jobs, providing all sorts of income for the wider community. But actually, the asset has a burden on it that says it must go back to the original owner if it's not used for education purposes or something similar. So, you need to, to be clear about those sort of things. Number five, is it the right asset? <laughs> Costs is very important. What are the likely costs of acquiring a site? You might be offered a site a pound, which is great, that's brilliant. But if it's going to cost you three million pounds to get to do what you want to do on it, is that right? Is that, you know, we've got to look at what the cost of developing a site. At an early stage, you can put this down and out by you might have somebody in your team that is a surveyor that can give you a pretty good idea of how much it's going to cost. Or you may be directed towards some funding and a professional person to give you that outline. But remember your core purpose, because when you start getting people in who aren't part of your community, but can see from their experience other things you could do, be careful you're not got what's called mission drift and they move you into other areas because it's great ideas, it's brilliant, but it might not stick with what you and the community want to do. The next part is management and maintenance costs. Get a pretty good idea of that. Maybe the original owner has some idea of how much those costs are and if they do, try and get them nailed down at an early stage. Um, because there may be things that you as a community can do can, to reduce the cost. Once you see them all written down, you can think, well, well, we could maybe change that and change that. Another thing to think about, is there anybody else that you can use the site with? You know, can you, can you share 
that site with some other organisation that can bring added benefit to your community. In quite a few cases, for example, the local authority have kept an office within the building and as a key tenant they're bringing in a regular income but you know at the start that you're going to get towards the costs. Make sure you write all this down. It's actually really worthwhile keeping a record, a comprehensive record of what you've done at this stage because you will have to go into it in much more depth when you're compiling a business plan and when you're getting to the, the, the nitty gritty of it all. Um, so if you've got it all written down, it can cut time for professionals and therefore cut your costs a bit. So just to give a wee overview of what the Community Ownership Support Service, or COST, affectionately known, what we do, we complement <coughs> the local support you have here in Argyll and Butte, and you're, you're very well served by all the support you do have. Um, but we can give expert advice on all aspects of the asset transfer. We do deliver training courses, the um, viability versus liability course that we do, which is, is this is just a very tiny part of, usually takes a whole day to deliver. Um, we also signpost to other support organisations, which will guide you in the specifics of detail. For example, if you've got a heritage building, we can direct you to people that can help you with that. And there's also worth having a look at the website because our website has got a huge amount of information on it and it's quite, it's easy to work through the process of whichever place you are. I don't know how many of you have seen our website but I invite you to go and have a look and get in touch with ourselves and that's how you get in touch with us. I'm here today with my colleague Linda who's sitting here at the front and we'll be in the marketplace over the break periods so we'll speak to you then. We've got a lot of literature with us so thank you very much.